On July 20th afternoon, the Jingguang North Road Tunnel was jammed with traffic. A female taxi driver, Zhu Yun, was stuck in this tunnel in her new car. Zhu Yun drove into the Jingguang Tunnel at 3 p.m., and it took her almost two hours to get to the exit of this two-kilometer tunnel. Why does the traffic move so slowly? Zhu Yun mentioned two main reasons that caused the slow traffic in Jingguang Tunnel. The first is the limited capacity of Zhengzhou's municipal drainage facility. Whenever it rains, water is difficult to drain out. The water puddle decreases vehicles' moving speed, causing road congestion in many places in Zhengzhou, including this Jingguang Tunnel. And the second reason is the closure of Midway Exit. The North Jingguang Road Tunnel was originally designed to have a midway vehicle diversion with the right turning exit. On that day, she was planning to get out of the tunnel earlier through the midway exit. However, later she found that the exit is closed due to high traffic stress of the roads above the tunnel. Although this initiative has relieved the traffic pressure above the tunnel, it intensified the traffic congestion inside the tunnel. Around 4 p.m., the heavy rain had worsened the traffic congestion inside the tunnel. Zhu Yun noticed that there was not much water on the road, despite the traffic was jammed. Her car has finally moved to the tunnel exit after she's been blocked for nearly two hours. There were only a few cars in front of her, and they can get out of the tunnel once the traffic light turns green. However, within just a few minutes, the tunnel suddenly was filled with flood water, and car doors were all blocked. Everyone panicked as everything just happened too fast. Zhu Yun found that the flood has covered her tires, and the cars that were far behind were already drowned. She saw two young girls screaming for help while trying to climb up to the roof of the car. The entire tunnel was echoing people's cry for help. Zhu Yun was upset that her new car got soaked in the flood water. While she's debating if she should abandon the car and escape, or should wait for help in the car, she heard a person yelling at her, "You would die if you don't get out now." With this person's help, she opened the door, and they swam towards the tunnel exit. Once they got out, they saw the flood has filled the entire tunnel, and people screaming starts to be on and off. The flood came too fast, giving people no time to react. I was only a few minutes away from the exit, she recalled. Wu Qiang, an owner of an installation company in Zhengzhou, on July the twentieth, he was out on an errand in his Audi A8 with his driver and brother. On his way home, his car got stuck in the Jingguang North Road tunnel, that's twenty to thirty meters away from the southern exit. His house was just another four kilometer away from the tunnel. However, they were forced to detour because of the flood. They tried to control the car, and yet it died not long after. They panicked and started to call the police simultaneously, but the signal was weak, and the line was too busy to get through. The muddy water was rushing against the car, and the water was rising so fast that the car floated out of control and retreated more than 200 meters back towards the tunnel. In the tunnel, the lights suddenly went out, making the whole tunnel turns into darkness. While outside the tunnel, rainstorm overwhelmed the streets. The world became blurry. People could hardly see things in front of them. Meanwhile, the mobile phone signal started to become intermittent, making it difficult to reach outside for help. After a while, the water in the tunnel has risen to almost 160 centimeter high and started to leak into their car. At that moment, Wu Chang felt the death is approaching. Under such critical situation, three of them decided to save themselves. They opened the sunroof and tried to get out. Wu Chang's brother, who knows how to swim, first got to the roof and tried to swim out. 
However, he was obstructed by the turbulent water. So he grabbed a nearby cable line close to the east side of the rail guard. Wu Chang and the driver who cannot swim finally succeeded in reaching the rooftop. Ten minutes later, the water quickly rose to the height of the neck. Vehicles next to Wu Chang and the people in them all sank into the water. Wu Chang recalled that he couldn't see anything else except two or three cars that were floating on the water. His driver was crouching on the rooftop, while Wu Chang himself was crouching on the car hood cover, holding onto the windshield wipers. His Audi A8 was like a floating small island in the tunnel. The water was still rising, and their car was slowly sinking, leaving the car roof was suicidal. There was only one chance left for them. They must wait for the car to drift close to the rail guard and quickly reach to the other side, and then climb along the rail guard until they reach outside and wait for the rescue. Fortunately, after they have successfully climbed to the east side rail guard, the Audi A8 has drowned into the water as if it completed its mission. Wu Chang's brother first swam to the ground surface along with the rising water. And then reached out to save the driver with Wu Chang's help. After the driver safely got out, him and Wu's brother have pulled Wu Chang out of the water. Meanwhile, there is no live person seen in the tunnel. The entire tunnel was filled with flood water in less than three minutes after they got out. I am probably the last one to escape. Wu Chang looked at the flooded tunnel, feeling blessed to get saved. They were sheltered on the fifth floor of a small building not far from the site. It was a sleepless night for them. Even at three in the morning, he seemed to hear someone outside the window shouting for help. When he looks outside the window, he couldn't see anything but the forklifts that were searching and rescuing the victims in the heavy rain. At 3 or 4 p.m., Jiang Yong, a native of Zhoukou, Henan Province, who was on a business trip to Zhengzhou, drove his black SUV into the Jingguang North Road tunnel and got stuck at an exit gate. After about an hour, the groundwater accumulated quickly rise, gradually to the car chases. The water rushing against the vehicles, making loud crunching sounds. Jiang Yong pulled the handbrake, and he was scared as he felt even the handbrake couldn't stop the car. He told his partner in the passenger seat that he needs to go out and check what's wrong. Once he got out, the water has already passed his knee, and he looked at the direction of the tunnel exit, and saw the car behind him was floating on the water surface. He immediately called his partner to escape without the car. The water was rushing," said Mr. Zhang, who weighs about 150 pounds, and he was overwhelmed by the water. He and his partner held hands and helped each other as they moved toward the green belt in the middle of the road. It took Zhang Yong about two or three minutes to get to the green belt. The car had been washed away. I had impulsion to go up and drive it out to save it, but I looked around and gave up. He said, as he suddenly sensed a fatal signal from the sound of water drainage. When I heard there was no sound coming out of the drainage, I knew that was the time to escape. Jiang Yong recalled later that the only thing he remembered is himself tearing his voice and shouting desperately to the people in front to go up faster. Soon, after about five minutes, the tunnel was filled up. Once he got out, Jiang Yong saw the tunnel was a vast expanse of water. Half of the Jingguang North Road tunnel sign was flooded. He also saw a man who must have escaped from his car was swimming hard towards the outside. During this Henan flood, we've seen locals have been actively rescuing victims from the water, creating online documents of lost people. Summarizing the number of stranded trains and needed resources, 
helping to transmit rescue calls, posting live footages, and so on. However, when facing such a serious disaster, Chinese officials from the top hierarchy to the bottom have been empathetic, and none of the Communist Party leaders have rushed to the disaster scene. The chairman Xi Jinping himself even went to visit Tibet during this time. This will be impossible in a democratic country. Yet for decades, the CCP has continued to point the fingers at the outside world, constantly accusing and smearing liberal democracy in order to maintain its harsh rule inside China. All this shows that the Chinese people do not need the CCP as a corrupted party, a rogue party. And a party without action, without the CCP, the Chinese people can live a new life with the freedom, dignity, and security. Just after the hundred-year party celebration on July first, the flood in Henan Province have uncovered more red lies, the so-called one miracle after another, the so-called great country have shown its true color. It turns out that there are so many weak links in mainland China. The officials would discharge the flood to put people's lives at risk when there's a downpour. The Chinese people suffer from rainstorms, floods, explosions, plague, human rights violations, network blockades, and strict monitoring. At the same time, the CCP officials continue to corrupt and embezzle crazily. Where's China's future with a party like this? Thank、you